What's up guys? Welcome to another video in my series called, you know, Fountain Pen 101. In this video, I'm going to go over the different types of nibs that are generally available for sale. Um, this is by no means all the different types of nibs. They're actually, you know, custom grind you can get. I know Pilot has a boatload of different nibs. Uh, you can get music nibs with them. You can get uh, Waverly nibs with them, all that stuff. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go over... The nibs that I have, and what I could, and you know what I would consider as pretty common nibs that you can get. Uh, the main categories that I consider fountain pen nibs would be round nibs, which, in my mind, most common. Um, just gonna draw a very simplified version. Basically, it comes to a point. This is a terrible nib, but whatever. I'm not an artist. That would be a round nib. I'm not sure how well you can make it out. Uh, you know what I'm writing with right now, a Pilot Custom 74. This is a round nib. At the tip of the nib, you actually have a ball of metal. Um, that's overly exaggerated, but the reason why it's called a round nib because that the tipping material is a round shape. Um, you also have italic nibs, which. If you imagine, like I said, that's the nib. It's actually a flat cut top on the top of the nib, whether it be tipping, whether there be tipping or not. Uh, I do have uh, a nib creeper that I italicized myself. It basically has no tipping, it's just writing darkly with the nib. So, that would be an italic nib. Um, you also have oblique. Let's just say OBB. Uh, most obliques are broad nibs. Um, that's oblique broad. And what that is, is it's kind of like an in-between of an italic and a round nib from what I understand. Basically, if you look at it from the side or from the top, this is a terrible drawing. Okay, I'm going to redo that. It's a nib that's basically cut at an angle. Um, you know, a lot of times with oblique nibs, you know, especially with nibmeisters, what they do is they'll take a round nib. Let me actually draw a bigger image so you can see better. They'll take a nib, and depending on whether you want a right or a left oblique, they will actually cut off the tipping of the nib so it's at an angle. So it would be... This is very, very exaggerated. It's actually, I don't even know how well you can make it out. But it would be cut in an angle. Um, I call it kind of like an italic because it's basically, you know, if you consider the tip of an italic nib, it's actually at an angle instead of just cut uh, perpendicular with the rest of the nib itself. Um, people like oblique nibs because what happens is instead of having to write at a certain angle with an italic nib, uh, they can write, they can customize the nib so that they can write with their standard uh, pen angle, but still get the nice italic line that you kind of expect where the thin and the thick lines are. Uh, and then you also have flex nibs. Uh, I'm not even going to draw it. It's, flex nibs are basically kind of like round nibs. Uh, the only difference being the tines spread out much easier. Um, certain pens, they just have very soft tines and they will spread and give you a flex writing style. Other pens like the Nib Creepers, they're cut specifically to spread out quite a bit, uh, but you can still write regularly with a flex nib like you were writing with a round nib. Uh, you just basically put no downward pressure and it's basically like writing with a round nib. And let me just give you some writing samples, I guess. Uh, in terms of round nibs, um, you can have various different line widths. This one, like I said, is a medium. It's a eastern medium, which means it's actually a little finer. This would be considered more in between a fine and a medium of western nibs. This is a Bach nib, I think. Uh, so this is a, a western fine. This is a Parker Medium.
and here you can see the difference between Eastern and Western nib sizes. The medium on an Eastern pen is a little bit narrower than a medium on a Western pen. Here I have an italic. You can see the line variation there. Uh, when I write at this angle, it's a very thin line. When I write at this angle, it's a much thicker line. And then here I have a flex pen. So and I have some railroading. But you can see here, basically, I put no pressure. It's a thinner line. I can start putting pressure on there. And if I cannot get it to railroad, the line width increases. So I'll actually do a little bit of writing. Uh, let's just take, let you see the difference in the writing between a round, an italic, and a flex. I kind of already see the flex there, but you know, let's just go to a different page. Here I have a round medium. So, let's just write something quick. The quick brown fox. You can see here with the round nib, um, there isn't really much line variation in the writing itself. Uh, this nib is a relatively soft nib, so I can actually get line variation if I want to put downward pressure on it. But I don't want to, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but, you know, well, I might as well just show you a cross hatch of it. But you can see here, basically, any direction I write in, the line width is the same. With the italic, this is a one point one millimeter. And like I showed before, when I go in this side, the lines are very thin. When I go ninety degrees to that, the lines are much thicker. Then, well, you know, that's another example. I'll, I'll show you another italic. This is a nib creeper that I cut, you know, italicized myself. Uh, this is, I believe, a one point. It's somewhere in between a 1.1 and 1.5. It does give me a slightly wider line than the 1.1 italic. So you can see the line variance here. Uh, because there's no tipping on there, the line is actually very, very fine. But then once I go perpendicular to it. Oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, because there's no tipping on it, it actually cuts into the paper relatively easily. I have to, I'm, I'm kind of rushing through this, but I have to take my time in it and I get really smooth lines. but you can see the line variance in there. And then finally with the flex, I can write with it normally. You can see here I'm not applying any pressure at all and it's a, basically it writes like a fine round nib, but if I want to, you know, no flex versus flex. So going across and down, no variance. With flex nibs, you only want to apply pressure when you go down with strokes. So if I go across and then down. That's railroading. But you get the idea. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have any oblique cut nibs, so I can't really demo that for you. But there's the major differences between some of the most common nibs you can find. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.